Hi everyone. So let's do a quick Bible study of Psalm 23. There are some amazing riches and treasures that I found in this scripture and I want to share this with you. So join me. So first of all, we need to understand that this Psalm 23 is the Psalm of David and he's expressing, you know, he's telling who God is to him and what God does for him. And it's one of the most famous psalm of all psalm and one of my favorite, actually. I remember I studied it in uh, Sunday school. So I'm reading in the NLT version, New Living Translation. And let's start from verse 1. Psalm 23, verse 1, the Bible says, The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I love the way he starts this scripture. The Lord is my shepherd. So whatever you are going to see David mentioning as benefits in this scripture, it's only a result of the fact that the Lord is his shepherd. There's a sense of a relationship between David and the Lord in this scripture. He said the Lord, he didn't say the Lord is a shepherd or the Lord is their shepherd. He said the Lord is my shepherd. There's a sense of belonging and there's a sense of a relationship, an intimacy, a close relationship between the one who's talking and the one who is talking about, meaning God. Meaning you cannot experience the benefit of this scripture if the Lord does not become the shepherd of your life. Meaning if you do not surrender to his leadership. Because who is a shepherd? Is the one who leads the flock. Is the one who leads the sheep. Meaning you need to surrender to the leadership of the Lord in order to experience everything that David is going to highlight in this scripture. The Lord is my shepherd. Not just a shepherd, but the Lord is my shepherd. Can you say this about yourself, that the Lord is your shepherd? So every consequence that we see in this scripture, it's only the result of the fact that the Lord was the shepherd of David. The things you experience in life are just the result of the person leading you or the thing that is leading you. Who leads your life? What you experience in life is just the result of what is leading you. And in this scripture, whatever David was mentioning that he was experiencing was only a consequence or a a result of the Lord being his shepherd. His shepherd. And he continues to say, the Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. I want you to say this. In New King James, he says, I shall not want. He said, I have all that I need. There's a difference between what you want and what you need. When the Lord is your shepherd, it doesn't become, you know, like a magician or a wizard. He gives you everything you want. You say, I want this. He gives it to you. No. But he will give you everything that you need. Meaning, no matter the circumstance you will find yourself, God will supply you with what is necessary to sustain you in that season. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. And because the Lord is my shepherd, I have all that I need. All that I need. You will never find yourself in a position where the Lord cannot provide for you when the Lord is your shepherd. You will always have everything you need when the Lord is your shepherd. And I repeat, there's a difference between what you need and what you want. He's not saying that the Lord is your shepherd, he will give you what you want. But the Lord is your shepherd, you have all that you need. There is nothing that you need that you cannot have when the Lord is your shepherd. And this is something you have to understand. And he says, he let me rest, verse 2, he lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He let me rest. Meaning when the Lord is your shepherd and is leading you, there's a rest, there's a peace. And I love, he said, he leads me beside peaceful streams. What I understand in this scripture, especially in this verse, peaceful streams are not outside. But the peaceful stream that David is talking about is an inside peace. Remember, Isaiah 26, verse 3, the Bible says, you shall keep in perfect peace 
whose mind is stayed on you. Meaning there's a sense of peace. There's a peace that the Lord releases in your heart when he becomes a shepherd of your life. Jesus said, I give you my peace. Those peaceful streams are inside. That no matter what is happening around you, there's just peace on the inside of you. You are not troubled by the storms around your life because there's a peace that your shepherd brings in your heart. He leads you beside peaceful streams. No matter what is happening, no matter the winds or the tornado or whatever is happening around you, there's a peace in your heart when the Lord is your shepherd. And I love verse 3. He says, He renews my strength. When we talk about renewal, meaning there are things that happen in life that can drain you. There are things that happen in life that can make you tired, that can make you, you know, you, you don't feel the strength or sometimes you just feel weak. But when the Lord is your shepherd, when you reach that limit, he comes and he renews your strength. And as I said in the beginning, these are the result only because the Lord is your shepherd. There's a relationship. So if he is not your shepherd, whatever I'm talking he, about here won't really apply to you. So make the Lord your shepherd to experience all this. He says, he renews my strength. And, I, and then he says, he guides me along the right path, bringing honor to his name. He didn't say he just guides me. He guides me along the right path. Meaning in this life, there are many paths. In this life, there are many ways, many roads, many decisions that you need to take. But when the Lord becomes the shepherd of your life, he will help you make the right decision. He will lead you along the right path, just like David is saying here. And those right paths that you will take to follow him will bring honor to his name, meaning your life begins to give glory to God. In, no, in whatever you're doing, you, f you, you just realize that everything you do just brings honor to God's name. Everything you do just glorifies Jesus. This is a fulfilled life bringing honor to his name. But now I love verse 4. It's actually one of my favorites. Verse 4, he says, Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your road and your staff protect me and comfort me. I love this. He said, Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me even when i walk through first there's an idea that the darkest valley or the dark times in your life are not there to stay but it's just a season because he said even when i walk through he didn't say even when i dwell in the darkest valley no he said even when i walk through the darkest valley meaning sometimes you find yourself in difficult situations those are just seasons. Do not cry in your difficult situation as if you're going to stay there for forever. Or it's not going to pass. No, it just came to pass. It's just a season. And David is saying that even when I walk through the darkest valley, he didn't just say through a dark valley. He said through the darkest valley. It's actually worse when you read it in the New King James Version. Even though I walk through the, the, the valley of the shadow of death. <laughs> you know that that's even scary the valley of the shadow of death in the new king james version but here he said in through the darkest valley so no matter the situation where you are maybe it's the worst situation the, the of every situation you have experienced in your life this is the worst where you where, where you are right now but let me tell you something you are not there to stay there you are just walking through and for you to walk through unafraid and to walk through with success and come out on the other side with success, there's a secret. He said, for you are close beside me. Meaning the presence of God is the assurance to successfully go through the darkest valley. So in whatever situation you find yourself, make the Lord your shepherd and keep the Lord close beside you. Close beside you. 
and verse five, you almost we're almost at the end. Verse five is I I, I love verse five. It said, "You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor my you honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessing." He said, "You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies." You know, when I was thinking about that, and when you study the life of David. David is the is a person who went through a lot of persecutions, a lot of people trying to fight him, even the king Saul himself. But what David is saying is that even when those people are trying to fight me, the Lord will prepare a table for me in their presence. Meaning, you see, God is a master at elevating you and promoting you at the same place where you have been humiliated. But there's an idea here. David did not say, when I prepare a feast, you come and anoint my head. No, he said, you prepare a feast for me, meaning God is the one who will prepare a feast for you. So maybe you have experienced some hurt or people have done bad to you, your enemies of sort. Don't try to seek vengeance by yourself. Let the Lord prepare a table. Let the Lord prepare a feast for you in the presence of those who have hurt you, in the presence of your enemies. Don't try to fight back by, you know, seeking revenge. No, walk in the love of God. Keep on following the Lord. And the Lord, I promise you, the Lord will prepare a feast for you in the presence of your enemies. And he will honor you by anointing your head with oil. And there's another blessing that can be said, my cup overflows with blessings. When you let the Lord take care of the situations in your life, where you've been hurt, where you've been betrayed, you let the Lord take care of that. He comes and he makes your cup overflow with blessings. You have to understand this is so beautiful. And to finish, the last verse is one of my favorite as well. He said, surely. Like this was like now a conclusion. He said, you do this, you do this. He said, Now that I see everything that you do when you are my shepherd, surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life. And I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me. And I love the song. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. You know, his goodness is running after you. You know, this is like a conclusion. You know, this is not something that David was asking God to do. No, these are the result of making the Lord the shepherd of your life. He said, surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life. Your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life. This is a mentality. When you wake up in the morning, Repeat this scripture over yourself. Say, Father, for today, your goodness and unfailing love is pursuing me. When you want to do something, before you do that thing, say, thank you, God, because your goodness and unfailing love is pursuing me in this very thing that I'm about to do. And you will surely see his goodness and unfailing love pursuing you. So, in conclusion, this scripture is actually an invitation to a relationship with the Lord. Because David is just highlighting highlighting what the Lord does in your life when he becomes the shepherd of your life. So it's an invitation. It's an invitation for you who's watching me now to make the Lord the shepherd of your life. Let the Lord become the shepherd of your life. Let him lead you in whatever thing you want to do. And you will see his goodness, his mercy, and his blessing overflow in your life. Thank you so much for being with me. We're going to have maybe another Bible session later for another scripture. But this was Psalm 23 for you. God bless you. Have an amazing time wherever you are. And take care, take care, take care. Bye-bye. I love you guys. See you.